We're so grateful for our worship team, and I want to say thank you for joining us on our Christmas Eve service here at Shepherd Church. Today is the conclusion of our Christmas series, which we are calling It's a Wrap. And for us, this series has been all about turning the page. How many of you, like me, are looking forward to getting this year, 2020, behind us. How many of you are excited to get this behind us? I I, I thought so. Well, Christmas is the perfect time to begin the transition from the past to the future. We began this series three weeks ago looking at how Jesus is Emmanuel, which means God with us. Next, we studied the Immaculate Conception that Mary conceived Jesus in her womb even though she was a virgin. And I know that sounds impossible, but we learn that God specializes in the impossible. And then last weekend, we studied the Song of Mary, and we saw how God lifts up people who feel downtrodden or who feel as though there is no hope. Well, today on this Christmas Eve, we want to present the Christmas story from a different perspective. Normally, if you would read the first few chapters of any of the Gospels, you would see Christmas from a human viewpoint. You would see a crying baby lying in a feeding trough between a poor Jewish couple huddled together in the cold in a stable built for animals, a brilliant star in the heavenlies leading wise men to bring treasures to an infant child. But today, we want to take a look at the Christmas story from God's point of view, from His perspective. Now, if you look at the year 2020 from a human perspective, it is downright depressing. Many of us are struggling, wondering how we're going to pay the bills. Many of us are wondering how long will this lockdown last? How long will we suffer? How much worse can things become? Well, I want you to take your Bibles, if you will, and turn to the Gospel of John. Turn to John chapter 1. In order for you to see this year from God's perspective, you must see Christmas from God's perspective. Why? Because Christmas is the moment when everything changes for all of history. My first point is that Jesus is the Word of God. For the Apostle John, the Christmas story does not begin 2,000 years ago. No, for the Apostle John, it starts at the very beginning of creation itself. Because in the first verse of John chapter 1, here's what the Apostle writes. He says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He, Jesus, was with God in the very beginning. Perhaps many don't know this, but Jesus was present at the very creation of the universe. Let's look at that verse one more time. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I want to show you something very interesting. Stay in your Bibles in John chapter 1, but if you go back to the very first page of the Bible, the book of Genesis, it records for us the story of creation. I want to show you the first three verses in the Bible. This is Genesis chapter 1. It reads, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And verse 3 reads, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Now, you might have missed it, so I want to repeat verse 3. And God said, do you see the word said in verse 3? And God said, Let there be light. Well, we learn from John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And so when God spoke and said, let there be light, 
And when God spoke and said, let there be expanse over the waters, and we will call sky, and when God spoke and created the land of the earth and the spheres in the universe and the animals in the sea and in the air and on the land, and when God spoke and made human beings, oh, you have to know that if God was speaking, when God was speaking, that Jesus was there because Jesus is the Word of God. So whenever God is speaking, Jesus is speaking. And that's why the Apostle John could write in John chapter 1, verse 3, that through him, through Jesus, all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. Nothing in the world, nothing in the solar system, nothing in the entire universe was made without Jesus. Everything that was created was created through him because Jesus is the Word of God. That's point number one. My second point is that the Word, Jesus, speaks into your silence. Many of you are asking questions and it doesn't feel like you're receiving any answers. Many of you are shouting for relief and it doesn't feel like it's ever going to arrive. All you hear is silence. Well, tonight I want to tell you that Jesus has spoken into your silence. We've already seen that God spoke in the silence of creation, but we also know that throughout the entire Old Testament, through some 39 different books, and through various prophets like Jeremiah, Daniel, Ezekiel, Isaiah, and others. And then something happens at the very, very end of the Old Testament. God does all that talking in the Old Testament. We come to the very last book in the Old Testament, which is the book of Malachi. Malachi was a prophet. He was speaking on behalf of God, the last prophet. And after we read the book of Malachi, the last book in the Old Testament, God goes silent for 400 years. I want you to think about that. There is 400 years of silence between the Old Testament and the New Testament. The last we hear of God was in Malachi, and then we don't hear a peep out of God for 400 years. And after 400 years of Silence. On that first Christmas, God spoke into that silence and said, let there be love. And 2,000 years ago, love was born as a small and defenseless, defenseless child in a simple stable in the little town of Bethlehem. Jesus is the Word of God. And more than ever, he is speaking, and we need to listen to his voice. He speaks to us through the scriptures. He speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. He speaks to us through love, and he even speaks to us through our trials. And when we feel as if no one cares and that no one notices us, he whispers to us, I see you and I love you. And when we don't feel like relief is ever going to arrive, Jesus says, let me carry your burdens. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. And I believe that Jesus is speaking to you this very evening. He is speaking the words that you need to hear. It is up to us to listen. But that's not all the apostle John had to share with us. Yes, Jesus is the word. And yes, Jesus is speaking to all of us, but there's something else that's important for us to know. My third point is that Jesus is also the light of the world. Look back at John chapter one again, skip down to verse four. It reads, in him was life. That word was life. And that life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Down in verse 11, John writes, He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, 
he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. In those verses, we see Jesus came into this world as a light. And whenever you feel, and you might be feeling this right this moment, whenever you feel that you're lost or that you can't see a way through your situation, or that things look bleak or dark, or there is no light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak, all one needs to do is to come to Jesus. He is the light of this world. And in him and him alone is life and joy and peace and salvation. Adrian Rogers tells the story back in World War II in the North Atlantic, there was an aircraft carrier that was in danger from enemy submarines. And they had sent out five of their finest airplanes with five of their finest pilots to kind of uh, scout out and to see if they could spot the enemy submarines. But it was nighttime. And the captain of that aircraft carrier then realized that his ship and the entire crew was in grave danger. And so he gave this commandment. He said, every light on this ship is to be extinguished. There's to be a total blackout. Those five pilots that had gone out to try to find the enemy submarines finally returned to the ship and they radioed to the aircraft carrier. They said, we're coming home. Give us some light so we can land. And the radio operator said, I'm sorry. There's a total blackout. We cannot give you light. Another of the pilots radioed in and said, just give us some light and we will land. Again, the order came back. It's total blackout. We cannot give you some light. In desperation, one of the pilots radioed in and said, well, then give us just one light to help us find our way home. And the radio dispatcher there aboard that aircraft carrier with a broken heart said, I can give you no light and turned off that switch. And five brave American pilots, five of America's best went down in the blackness to the chilly waters of the North Atlantic and out into eternity. Many of us likely feel the same as those pilots felt. We're asking for just one light to guide us towards safety. We need just one glimmer of hope to show us where to go. We, we need the flicker of a single flame to give us hope that, that we're going to make it through the rest of this year and through the rest of our life. And what I want to say to you tonight is that Jesus is the light who shines into the darkness. Jesus entered himself a dark, broken, and sinful world. And for his entire life on this earth, the world did not understand him. In fact, the world rejected him and they nailed him to a cross and they buried him in a tomb. They did everything they could do to get rid of him. But three days later, he rose, and from the silence of the grave, the word of God spoke loud and clear. From the grip of death, eternal life sprung free, and from the darkness of this broken world erupted a light of salvation for the entire world. I want to prepare to close this message with this story Another story of an Anglican priest in Nigeria. His name was Father Tunde. Father Tunde was not raised in an Anglican family. He was raised in a strong Muslim family. And growing up, he had never heard of the name of Jesus. He was Muslim. But he tells the story of how he came to Christ he says that he had a dream. And in this dream, Jesus appeared to him. And Jesus was holding a lit candle shining brightly. And he brought me into this room, in this dream. And in this room, it was full of unlit candles. And he heard Jesus say, 
I want you to take my light and you must light all these other candles. And even though his family disowned him, and even though he was beaten and bruised for following Christ, Father Tunde never wavered. He spent the rest of his life lighting candles. He kept taking the light of Christ to those who had never heard of him, who had never seen him, showing them the way to eternal life. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a dark time in our world right now. But Jesus is the light of the world. He entered this world as a simple child, lived a sinless life, and eventually went to the cross and died just so that we could become children of God. And this Christmas, I ask you to open up your eyes and see Jesus standing before you. He's holding a candle, showing you the way, and He's holding a candle and he's asking you to share the light to all the world because the world desperately needs it. More than ever, this dark world needs the light of Jesus Christ. Can someone say amen? It happens one candle at a time. I want you right there in your house to, to grab the candles that you have prepared and I'm gonna ask the choir to come back out here and in a few moments, we're going to sing that Christmas carol. We sing it every Christmas Eve, that song called Silent Night. And as we sing this song in the third verse, it's in the third verse, I want you to hear, listen for it. We sing those words, Son of God loves pure light. And as you sing those words, I want you to imagine Jesus standing right before you. Jesus holding a candle. And I want you to imagine Jesus lighting your candle, that he's actually the one that lights your candle. And then I want you to imagine taking that light, taking that love, taking that message of Christ and sharing it with another person. And you share it with another person, and I want you to begin to share, light the candle of those people in your house there, and just share it with another. Uh-huh, uh-huh, someone say amen. And share it with another, you could do this. And share it with another. Amen, amen, amen. One person shares it with another, and soon the whole world is full of candles burning brilliantly against the night sky. That's what Christmas is all about, sharing the light of Christ, and that light transforming the entire world. And all that is bad becomes good, and all that is broken is mended, and all that is evil becomes pure, all that is lost becomes found, all that is sinful is covered in grace, and all that is dark vanishes by the light and love of Jesus, God's one and only Son. That's the story of Christmas from God's point of view. I want you to join with us as we sing this Christmas carol, Silent Night. Sing along with us right there in your home. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep. Heaven 
Oh, amen, amen. And thank you again for joining us on this Christmas Eve. And I just want you to know that we love you, that God loves you, and we want to wish you and your family a very, very blessed and Merry Christmas. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for joining us here tonight.